one of my favorite rides at Kennywood is the Raging Rapids. Now, as you know, one of the most notable features of the Raging Rapids is the waterfall, which always seems to get the same person wet no matter how many times you ride it. So we thought we would test to see just how random the waterfall really is. To conduct this study, we first had to figure out which patrons were riding together in a raft. We then selected one of these patrons, usually the most energetic and eager to participate one, to have a lanyard. That patron would then be directed to sit in the first seat to the left when they entered the raft from the loading dock. We also asked the patron to remember who got the waterfall seat. When the patron leaves the raft, they were instructed to go out the exit of the ride normally and then to return their lanyards to another member of our testing team. There, they would answer some questions such as who got the most wet in relationship to where they were sitting with the help of a diagram, and whether or not they thought the waterfall seat was random. Well, it looks like we learned a lot today about the uh, Raging Rapids ride, and it appears that it might not be as random as a lot of people thought. What did you see? Well, it seems that a lot of people in seat five or six get hit a lot more than other seats. Yeah, I kind of thought it was that way with seat number one, the first seat, uh, which was immediately on the left when you entered the ride. But it definitely seemed not very random to me. Do you think you agree with that? Yeah, it felt like there were just a couple seats that really got hit hardest and then the others really no water. Before we can start our hypothesis testing, we have to state our null and alternative hypothesis. Since we'll be doing a chi-square test for independence, our null hypothesis will state that there is no relationship between the seat chosen and the probability of getting hit by the waterfall. The alternative hypothesis will simply state the opposite, that there is an association. Before we can start our test, we need to consider the technical conditions of the chi-squared test. First, we need to consider the sample. The sample did not really come from a simple random sample. It was a convenient sample from one day at an amusement park spread out throughout the line at what we deemed to be adequate spacing to ensure we didn't have two people with a lanyard trying to go in the same cart at once. This was systematic, but we don't really expect this to contribute to any source of error. Further, we need to look at the expected values. The expected values must be greater than or equal to 5, and with a sample size of 30, we have ensured that, and you'll see that a little bit later when we start to run the test. Each raft consists of six seats in three groups of two. When we had the passengers load into the raft, they were to load in the first seat to the left. This way we can label all the seat numbers one through six. Now it's time to tally up the frequencies for each seat getting hit by the waterfall in one through six. This is a bit of a tedious process, but it all worked out in the end. The test we're going to be performing with this data is called a chi-squared test for independence. We'll be looking for a statistically significant association between frequency of getting hit by a waterfall and seat position. Now that all the data is recorded, we can record some tallies, which is 12 for seat number 1, 4 for seat number 2, 3 for seat number 3, 3 for seat number 3, 2 for seat number 5, and 6 for seat number 6. This data is now represented in a chart with seats in one column, frequency of hit by the waterfall in another, and then expected value in the last. The expected value we calculated was 5, since there are 30 trials and six seats per raft. To calculate the test statistic for the chi-squared test, we use the sum of the differences of the expected values and the observed values squared divided by the expected values. In long notation, that would be these following sums, and it would go on with the rest of the data that is not shown here. With this test statistic, we can now go over to the chi-squared curve with degrees of freedom being 5, which is 1 minus the number of seats, and examine what our p-value will be. Here we see our p-value is 0 
This is substantially less than the alpha, which we set at the beginning of the experiment to be 0.1. We set it this high because we didn't expect to see very much variation, and even small differences would be rather important if you were getting drenched every time you rode the ride. The p-value being less than our alpha, we are forced to reject the null hypothesis in favor of our alternative hypothesis. But I don't think we did enough data discovery yet. It's time to move on to post hoc testing. Here, we will be looking for differences between each seat. Uh, this is different than the chi-squared because we're going to look for clusters and group patterns. So we'll do a series of z-tests. Now, we do realize that doing these z-tests with such small numbers and on top of the chi-squared and having them all repeated over each other will greatly increase the chances for a type 1 error. So keep that in mind when you examine these p-values. We conducted z-tests between every two seats on the ride, and we accidentally missed three of them, so we'll go back at the end. And again, our alpha is set at 0.1, as it was in the rest of the experiment. And now I'll just fill in the rest of the z-test, which we forgot. And we'll find a pattern, which is that seat 1 is statistically significant from all other seats. Meaning that there is a greater probability of you getting wet if you sit in seat 1. Now to go further, we're going to do two more z-tests. One testing seat 1 to see if it's greater than the probability of any given seat being chosen at random, and another for seat 5, which had the lowest, to see if it's actually less than any seat at random. We'll be doing a one proportion z test here, and our p value will remain the same at 0.1. With the p value for seat 1 being so small, we have no choice but to reject the null hypothesis, and the p value is pretty close to our threshold for the seat number five, so we have to be a little bit more cautious with the results. But if I was riding the ride and I didn't want to get wet, I'd put my money on seat number five.